What's up guys, I'm Mike from Stocked Up and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. Tomorrow is the last day, the last trading day of 2020. Uh, the market had a pretty boring day today again, but we did have some crazy movement from Baidu uh, on some interesting news that we're going to cover in a couple minutes. Um, in this video, we're going to go over all of the plays that we are watching to end 2020, all of the news that came out today. And at the end of the video, we have a $3.5 million option that we're going over that expires tomorrow. So make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video. And if you aren't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. Tom and I post brand new videos every single day. But Tom, what happened in the stock market today? Yeah, there was actually a lot of news, but I think the biggest news today is the Baidu news, and they were up over 13% at the high of the day. And uh, actually, the Motley Fool reports that a few days ago in Brussels, the European Union negotiators finalized the terms of a historic investment agreement with China. And so, this is seven years in the making, and the new comprehensive agreement on investment is expected to grow international trade between the EU and China, facilitate cross-border investment, and strongly stimulate the economies of both nations, according to the Chinese President Xi. And this is just a crazy thing. This is a pretty big deal, you know, seven years in the making on this deal, and Baidu is up quite a bit, which is a Chinese stock. And just keep in mind, this is mainly going to help Chinese and European stocks. And there's not too many European stocks on the U.S. market, but we do have a few Chinese ones like Baidu. And really, this is the main one that we saw. And it's really it's moving really well off of the long term support as well. And it's just really good movement out of the stock off of this deal. And I just really like, um, you know, obviously that deal for these Chinese stocks, not necessarily for the United States, but, uh, you know, it's good for the EU and China anyways. Gotcha. So what are you thinking with Baidu? Do you like it for the long term? Do you like it for a short term trade? Uh, what are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, on on the long term, I'm not too confident in it yet. I, you know, I don't I really don't like it for the long term, but at least for the short term, I think that we can play a lot of momentum on the stock. It had a very nice bullish flag set up today. It broke above highs at close around two hundred and twenty dollars and ran up to around two twenty one. So I'll be looking for it to, to run up tomorrow, possibly up to like two twenty five maybe 224, but it just depends what we see tomorrow. I really think it has a lot of momentum though. And even on the daily chart, you can see how much it's starting to recover back to highs possibly of like 284. And that's a long way away. And I just think that we could see a lot of movement out of this stock over the next couple of days, as this is such a big deal. And obviously it took like seven years to make the deal. So that's why it's so large. Awesome. And then Tom, what's the update with these stimulus checks? I know there's a lot of uh, back and forth between 600 and 2000. What's the update there? Yeah, the big update is that it seems like the $2,000 stimulus checks are pretty much doomed after McConnell refuses to separate them from unrelated Trump demands per CNBC. And the $600 stimulus checks from the latest COVID relief bill are officially on their way to your bank accounts, according to two tweets from Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, on Tuesday evening. So there's going to the, these checks are, are pretty much going to go out and and people are starting to almost get them. I think I'm not sure if they're if they were talking about this Tuesday or next Tuesday. It says checks could have arrived as early as Tuesday evening for those who have direct deposit. According to Mnuchin, the IRS also confirmed that initial direct deposits began on Tuesday and will continue through next week. So it seems like they did actually start. And I just that's good to see as people are going to get the six hundred dollar checks. But at the same time, it is pretty, it's a pretty big letdown that they didn't end up getting the $2,000 passed. But in the end, at least we got $600 and, and the uh, overall economy can benefit from the bill as well. True. They've been fighting for forever uh, to just get a stimulus bill passed. So even though we didn't get the 2000 at least we did get a stimulus to end the year, which is good. The markets are kind of um, mixed off of this news. They were rallying earlier in the week, but they were... Uh, they were pretty just stagnant the past two days. So uh, that's interesting there. And then is there any other major news? You know, not too big, but the CDC did say that the new COVID strain in the U.S. could further stress already heavily burdened hospitals. So it seems like this new strain might start taking a foothold in the United States. And obviously, I, even if there's not a lot of numbers or something, I'm sure that it's going to be all over the news and there's going to be a lot of hype around it. If we do start seeing like an increased amount of cases or more deaths or something, I'm sure that they're going to say that 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 came from the UK or something like that. So just keep in mind that there could be some hype coming out about that. But um, really, other than that, there wasn't too much more uh, news today. 
Good stuff. Well, let's get right into our Discord member of the day. Today's member of the day is another YouTube commenter, uh, Richard, and he's always posting great information in the YouTube comments. As you guys know, comments really help us. And yeah, Richard's always posting very positive comments and always asking great questions. So thank you, thank you, Richard, uh, for all the support. We really appreciate it. So now let's get right into the momentum plays for tomorrow. With the first play, we have NIO. To the upside, electric vehicle stocks are actually starting to pop once again. Tesla had an amazing day too, uh, which is actually our second momentum play, but uh, let's get right into NEO. Yeah, go ahead and make NEO pop above 48.60, and I really like this play to the upside. It looks like a bullish flag, and they close very strong. Awesome, and then Tesla. Tesla, another EV. Go ahead and make them pop above 6.97. Yep, and they actually broke all-time highs today, it looks like. Oh, wow, they did? They they got that high. Oh, wow, I can't believe I saw them earlier this morning running, but I didn't think they'd actually get to that high mark. It's like every week we're saying Tesla broke another all-time high. <laughs> we're like broken records here. But yeah, Tesla is exploding. And then we have JD. JD, yeah, this stock's been running the past few days as well. Make them pop above 89.70. All right, and then we have Plug. Plug, plug power. I actually like this one. It looks like a pretty nice bull flag. Make them pop above 3440. And this one's a pretty solid setup. Awesome. So we are eyeing these four plays potentially to the upside tomorrow for day trades, only if they can break above the level Tom listed. But now it's time to get into the 3.5 million dollar options trade for tomorrow this one's kind of a gamble it looks like uh, so like i said 3.5 million dollars into the tesla 710 strike call options that expire tomorrow so looking at tesla they have a ton of momentum they're up uh just under four and a half percent today uh when tesla runs it normally runs for a couple days but it but at the same time this option is about 15 dollars out of the money and it expires tomorrow. This looks like a huge gamble in my opinion, but I think there's a good chance that someone can be uh, like selling these options as covered calls. That way it could be a complete win-win, but you know, Tesla is just one of those stocks when it has momentum, it likes to run. What are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, I really like it. I think that it can break above 700 possibly, which would be awesome. These could be covered calls. I think that would be the smartest situation here for the, for uh, for whoever did this trade. But at the same time, there's a lot of momentum. I would really think that it, if, it, if it does continue up tomorrow and breaks above the high of today, I think it could possibly hit 700 or even 710. You know, Tesla's so high in price that a $10 move isn't that crazy. You know, you can see it had a $28 move today. So as long as it just moves up around 10 points, it's pretty good. And I mean, I think I like the trade. I hope it's a covered call just because of how risky it is. But man, I mean, Tesla just looks pretty solid. And I would just really be uh, wary of that $700 mark. I think that's going to be a pretty big, uh, pretty big, like subconscious uh, level in people's minds. Gotcha. Yeah, I definitely agree with that $700 mark. I, I just checked the, uh, the probability and the market makers have a 21% chance of Tesla uh, being above $710 tomorrow. So I really hope they are shorting these calls, but we will definitely see what happens. And let's get right into our comments from the previous episode. With the first comment, we have Richard saying, thanks for the reminder about VIX and its relationship to the market. It's that type of knowledge, stock market news, and swing trade ideas that keep me coming back. So thank you so much for the kind words, Richard. Um, and then with the next question we have, uh, we have G saying, thanks, Mike and Tom. Uh, it would be great to get a follow-up on Apple based on yesterday's coverage and then today down due to stimulus news, etc. Would you say bearish for Apple tomorrow? So let's take a look at Apple. We've been seeing the tech sector not tanked. It, it, it hasn't tanked, but it's starting to fall off just a little bit. It's kind of pulling back. Uh, Apple did break all-time highs this week, and they're kind of falling back off of that news. And we did see the VIX up a decent amount tomorrow. Um, I would not doubt if we do see Apple continue to pull back. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, I mean, I think it looks like they're going to pull back as well. Um, they, they're actually right around, like you said, that all-time high. A couple of red days just happened, so possibly we could see a third. A lot of these tech stocks, like you said, really look like they're going to pull back. If we go to like a 15-minute chart, I like how they're trading below the 100 SMA, and it just looks like they're trying to hold this like 133.50 level, so possibly if we fall below that, it could be a really good play. 
Good stuff. With the next question, we have Clark saying, I watch your videos every day and they are so helpful. What are your thoughts on Zoom? Do you think it will keep trending down? Well, thank you for that great comment. I like Zoom a lot for cash secured puts right now or even buying it for the long term. Um, they did have a huge pullback from their highs of around 588. Right now they're at 353. Um, I can I can definitely see it pulling back, but you know if you get like a cash secured put, like for example, uh, like like I just said, Zoom is at 353. If we go out to G, no, let's go out to February. If we go out to February 19th of 2021, you can sell a 300 strike call option right now for about a thousand dollars. Basically, um, you're gonna win no matter what if you like Zoom for the long term. Uh, like I said, you can short this 300 strike call option, get paid about a grand. If Zoom is below $300 by expiration, you have to buy Zoom at um, $300 each and you have to buy 100 shares. Um, but if it's above $300, you just keep um, $1,000 in run. So uh, please know that cash secured puts, they do require a decent amount of capital because you might have to buy shares of Zoom. And you know if you do want to do this, make sure to definitely do a lot of research on how cash secured puts look. But if you do like it for the long term, it's not a bad time to uh, pick up some cash secured puts. But Tom, do you have any like technical analysis or any price points to watch on Zoom? Yeah, there's actually a little uh, inverse head and shoulders here, or just a straight up head and shoulders on Zoom. And you can see how there's a shoulder here around the uh, 485 level and it extends all the way over to here. And now they're starting to actually come a little lower, but there is a nice support around this 350 level. You can see that they actually hit in the past and we're sitting right on that level right now. I think if we do end up falling below that, it could end up going down a little bit more. But like you said, if you if you like it for the long term, those cash secure puts could be a great option for the long term. And another thing is, is that we're getting into this wintry season now. So if we do start seeing more more uh, more COVID cases and more shutdowns and stuff, Zoom might do uh, start doing a little bit better than they've been doing over the past few months. They might start popping and running again on uh, news of like schools having to use them more and just stuff like the virus is going to continue. So they would obviously uh, hold up to their revenue, uh, let's say like estimates and stuff like that. We'll have to see how the next revenue, uh, how the next earnings goes. But I I think it's a pretty good uh, play if uh, COVID starts going uh, rampant again. Gotcha. Uh, with the next question, we have Whitney saying, is there any way or anywhere we can find out a list of IPO lockout expiration? So this is a great question. Um, I don't know of any database that has it. I'm sure there are some out there. I personally don't know any. Uh, this is a great question, but I really like finviz.com. Uh, they have a ton of great data. You could build your own scanner on finviz. And it's all free. So I really like finviz.com for uh, just uh, like just stock data, stock news, stock upgrades in general. With the next question, we have Raj saying thoughts on BBBY. Earnings coming up, new management doing good, and uh, short float is really high. So let's take a look. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, it's actually holding this uh, this support level here around eighteen dollars very well. And this, I really like this support level. And it, hold on, I can actually draw. It's almost in like a little wedge or a uh, a flag right here. Let me go ahead and draw it up. But oh, it, yeah. the the technicals are looking very good on this stock. I mean, it looks very good at least um, in the short term. Like it might pop out of this to the upside, which would obviously be the uh, best case scenario here. But it could possibly fall down as well. We're sitting on the 1,000 SMA and the 100 SMA, so I personally like it. What do you think? Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I have not researched them fundamentally, but overall, just like on your technical analysis, I like it. It is in a descending uh, triangle right now. You just have to really make sure that it holds that support line. So, for example, you know, right now it is in a, it's, it's forming a good pattern, but if it breaks below that support, it's no longer going to be a good setup. And if you are in it, that's when I would cut it. Um, but obviously, like you said, the ideal scenario would be if we see a break above that descending trend line and we might see this thing run all the way back up to 25. Yeah, I think I think we could see that as well. And one thing to also keep in mind is that it's a uh, it's a retail stock and they have been getting killed over the past few years. Um, let me go out to a, uh, a max daily here 
And you can really see how much Bed Bath & Beyond is down. They used to be $80 a share a few years ago. So really watch out for this. You know, they haven't been doing good in the long term, but they could start uh, bringing it back up and start uptrending again. Sounds good. With the next question, we have Mike saying, just joined your channel. Very informative. Keep it up. Any thoughts on MARA or Riot? So these are the, the kind of Bitcoin stocks. So when Bitcoin runs up, these stocks also tend to run up. And I know Bitcoin is just exploding right now and it looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie. But um, as long as Bitcoin keeps popping, I'm sure these stocks will too. They have a lot of hype around them, but you know, Bitcoin's also popping. So it's not like they're just running for no reason like QS is, you know, uh, we made a video last week on it. But uh, overall, I like it. Bitcoin is looking pretty good. Um, Tom, do you have any like technical levels or price points or anything to watch out for? Yeah, I mean, with Riot, I think the biggest thing is going to be Bitcoin overall. There's actually some Fibonacci retracements that Bitcoin is getting close to. And I think that we could really start to see a possible drop on it. I'm going to be looking for a short position on it maybe over the next few weeks. Um, you know, I don't have the chart pulled up here, but um, you can see that in the past, Bitcoin really crashed. Um, whenever they hit that $20,000 level, they pretty much crashed all the way back down to like $4,000 to $3,000. And now they're all the way back up to like, what what are they up to now? Like twenty five to thirty thousand, like, like all the way up to like thirty thousand, right? The last time I checked, they're sitting right around twenty eight. Twenty eight. So yeah, around twenty eight thousand. They're getting really high. I'm I'm really gonna be watching for a pullback, just like they did they had in the past. But who knows how high this is gonna go in the short term, though? I like Bitcoin. You know, I I personally see a, a pretty good future with it. I like it overall, and I'm curious to see how much more this can run. You know, we've been waiting for. A long time to see it break past its previous highs around 20,000 and now we're already approaching 30,000 so I'm excited for Bitcoin overall and I'm curious to see how it's gonna do in the future but with that being said Tom, oh actually yeah you could pull it up uh, you could pull up Bitcoin futures I forgot they added those so yeah you could just see the chart on this thing it's just kind of just skyrocketing uh, overall it, it looks great in my opinion for the long term so uh, with that being said, Tom, do you have any last minute stocks, options, or any insight for the last trading day of 2020? You know, my last thoughts are really going to be, I think, highlighting the sector that really killed it this year, which is the EV sector. I think that these stocks like NIO and TSLA, right, they're right around all time highs on this last trading day of the year. If we have a, a brand new start of the year and these stocks start off on the right foot, that's just going to be fantastic for the EV sector, especially Tesla and NIO, which are a little bit, you know, those are the more popular stocks. And NIO, like, like it was one of our day trades today. So go ahead and watch it for tomorrow as well. It's going to be the last trading day of the year. So hopefully these EV stocks that have really killed it this year can kill it on the one final last day. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for everything. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Thank you so much for the comments. They really help us. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. Tom and I post brand new videos every single day. Thank you guys so much for all the support through 2020. We're very excited for 2021 and have a lot of uh, new additions and improvements on the way. Uh, so thank you guys so much for that. But with that being said, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that, let us know in the comments down below. But other than that, thanks for watching.